is a 350-year-old city that has a unique and fascinating history. Since its founding, many ethnic groups have come to Newark to seek a better life, or what some call the American dream. First group to settle in Newark was the Puritans, who moved here in 1666 to seek freedom of worship. They declared that Newark was to be, as nearly as possible, a kingdom of God on earth, and a city on a hill, as Jesus described in the Gospel of Matthew. For two generations, Newark was a quiet, rural village in which the church and state worked hand in hand to fulfill the Puritan settler's vision. In the early 1700s, however, there was a recognition that Newark would need to embrace people who had differing religious and political viewpoints. Newark gradually evolved from a uh, theocratic form of government to one in which all classes of people uh, could speak and vote according to their own conscience. Today, one important thing remains from its humble Puritan beginnings. The declaration that Newark is a covenant city with, which partners with God to advance his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Newark, city of destiny, tells the story of 15 men and women who advanced the kingdom of God in Newark in their own day through lives of dedicated service, courage, and faith. In 1930, the Lutheran Memorial Hospital raised money for a polished granite headstone on the grave of nurse Clara Moss here in Fairmount Cemetery. This helped to raise awareness that she had bravely volunteered to give her life to be a human subject to the U.S. government studies on the causes of yellow fever and how this deadly disease is transmitted to humans. Through her sacrifice, scientists learned how to eradicate yellow fever in Cuba, the United States, and many other countries. Years later, both the Cuban and the United States governments issued stamps to honor Clara Moss for her courage. Then in 1952, the Lutheran Hospital was renamed as the Clara Moss Memorial Hospital, making it the first American hospital to be named after a nurse. Located in Belleville, New Jersey, it is part of the St. Barnabas healthcare system, serving more than 19,000 patients a year. However, few people know the story about Clara Moss and her decision to lead a life that would glorify her creator. During the 20th century, there was a huge migration of African Americans to Newark to escape persecution and discrimination in the South. They came to Newark to enjoy a better life, but many soon discovered that life in New Jersey's largest city presented new challenges. Every day they struggled to find jobs, housing, health care, and social services. African Americans faced many subtle and blatant reminders that racism persisted in Newark as well as other northern cities. Dr. May McCarroll had a courageous life. She cared uh, for African Americans and opened up a private practice in her home in South Ward and cared for patients for more than 40 years. In 1945, she broke an important racial barrier by becoming the first black medical doctor to serve on the staff at Newark City Hospital. Dr. McCarroll and other civil rights activists also led peaceful protests that led to the uh, breakdown of uh, segregation in Newark theaters and downtown businesses. In the 1950s, Donald M. Payne grew up in Newark's North Ward and took a Star Ledger paper route at a, at a young age in order to have some spending money. By avidly reading the newspaper, he learned a lot about life and politics in, in Newark. He was particularly fascinated by stories about Congressman Peter Rodino, who helped to raise the consciousness and dignity of Italian Americans after the Second World War. Through these stories and with personal encounters with Newark leaders, the young Donald Payne began to dream about seeking office to do the same thing for African Americans. He started his professional career as a high school English teacher and youth leader at Newark's YMWCA. His work at the Y was legendary and in 1970 he was elected the organization's national president. 
Then in 1988, he was elected the first African-American representative from New Jersey to U.S. Congress, and he became internationally known for his reconciliation work in Africa and elsewhere. This statue of Donald M. Payne sits adjacent to the Essex County Courthouse and serves as a memorial to Donald Payne's dream to expand opportunities for men and women of all racial and ethnic backgrounds. Lloyd, we know, as we talked about, that God is not done with Newark, mm -hmm. despite the many challenges it faces today. The stories told in your new book, Newark's City of Destiny, are written to help you understand and vision each which aspects of Jesus' ministry, based on the book of Isaiah, you have been called to advance. These aspects are helping the poor, releasing the prisoners, improving health care, comforting those who are oppressed, and advancing equality of opportunity. Each of the people described in the book caught a glimpse of how the kingdom of God could be promoted as they partnered with God. These are just a few of the many stories that we could tell about the mustard seeds of faith that inspired many to see how God is at work still in our city today. Our today begins thy lamp to shine and no one may